Hi there, welcome to my channel. This problem from HackerRank is about using the map and the lambda function, both of them together, to tackle a problem. I really encourage you, if you haven't seen my videos on the map and the lambda function, go to the playlist around Python developer and you will find them there. Otherwise, I'll leave links up the top right when the time comes. Let's jump into this one. As you can see on my screen, I've got HackerRank on the left-hand side and a Jupyter Notebook on the right-hand side that helps me teach you how to tackle this problem. So let's jump into this one. This is the map and the Lambda function. All right, let me extend HackerRank and take you through what the task is. And then I'll run you through what code HackerRank has already given us. This is not a code that I have written. This is provided by HackerRank. Let's see what the problem is starting from the input. I will be inputting a number or the user will be inputting a number if you like, for example, number five, and they will receive a number of numbers that I don't really know how they work, but let me run you through how it works. The task is let's learn some new Python concept. You have to generate a list of the first n Fibonacci numbers, zero being the first number. So we're dealing with the Fibonacci numbers. If you don't know what they are, I encourage you to Google them and see the Wikipedia entry for Fibonacci numbers. Then apply the map function and a Lambda expression to cube each Fibonacci number and print the list. So cubing a number, if you don't know what it is, it is raising it to the power of three. I'll show you really quickly. So let me put it in simple words. The user will give me five and I have to provide five Fibonacci numbers, but the first one has to be zero for it. So it has to be zero, 1, 1, 8, and 27. So if you don't know what the Fibonacci numbers are, let me show them to you. Let's jump into JupyterLab. Let me extend it and I can show you what I'm talking about. So the Fibonacci list of numbers start with 0 and 1. And then from there, every next number is the result of adding the previous two numbers. So for example, now I want to write the third number I've got to say zero plus one, which makes it one, right? Now, the next one will be adding this one and this one, which makes it two. The next one will be adding this one and this one, which makes it three, right? Now I've got five first Fibonacci numbers, but the list goes on. It's an infinite list of numbers that you can just generate by adding the last two numbers. Now. If I were to provide the cube of this based on the criteria, I would have to create zero raised to the power of three, then one raised to the power of three, one raised to the power of three. As you can see, I'm just put, taking every one of them and raising it to the power of three, and then two raised to the power of three, and three raised to the power of three. This is the meaning of cubing, if you like, I will need a cube function, which essentially for x, it equals x, x raised to the power of three. That's the meaning of cube function. So if I show you the result of this one, this has to be zero, one, one, eight, and 27. So if I show you the hacker rank, you will see that I've got 0, 1, 1, 8, and 27. So this is the task, right? Now, let's see how we want to tackle this based on the provided code by HackerRank. HackerRank has already given me some code that I want to use and then progress from there. I have to use this code. Let me copy all of that and I'll bring it over here. I'll break it into pieces for you and I'm sure you will enjoy this. All right, let's extend my Jupyter Notebook. I just want you to see the white Jupyter Notebook. I'll do one more zoom in here. Now that I've zoomed enough, I will paste the code here. Don't worry for now, but I have to use this line, right? Complete the Lambda function. I have to complete this function, but eventually I'll be running this. Now, let's do step by step. The first thing we have to do, let's call it step one. Step one is accept the user input, right? That should be pretty easy. All I need to do is to say n equals int of the input function. So I literally copied this one. This will allow me to accept a user input. So if I run this now and enter five based on the example by HackerRank, n will be five. So we know that. And the next line is pretty much the most important line here. Let me copy that 
and bring it down here and you will see what we have to do. We will be printing something, that's easy, we know how to print things, but that thing will be a list. Again, we know that the final outcome will be a list, that's easy, we've got that. Now, there is something called a map, a cube and a Fibonacci here. Now, the map function will be my step number two. So let me open it here and call step two, making a map function for this problem. And that's not how you spell function. This is how you do it. And then in the, in the step three, I'll be talking about the lambda function. So step three, lambda function. And I think I would like to make my step four, putting it all together. I will put it all together. For now, let's just get rid of this line. I want to keep my screen really nice and tidy and start talking about a map function. So what is a map function? The video I have made for the map function, the link is up the top right. Click on that, go have a watch, try the examples that I'm running you through in that video and come back here. Your life will be way easier. But if you want to stay here, what we do with a map function, we normally provide a function, which I don't have anything yet, but I will make it soon. And then you need to provide an iterable. So what is an iterable? Again, go to that video. It's a lovely video I've made on map function, but iterables in Python are things like lists, strings, sets, dictionaries, generator functions, and tuples. So in general, those are iterables. Here, I will be really working with a list because that's what HackerRank tells me. And then you might ask me, hey, Amir, how do you know that we need a function and an iterable? Well, if I make this a comment and come to the end of this line and I say map question mark, which is a Python built doc string, it tells me, hey, for the map function, you need a function and you need an iterable or iterables. So that's how I know it. But now if I were to show you a very quick example, I can show you this. So I want to use the map function, which is like a painter, if you like. And I take the integer function, which whatever you feed it, it converts it to an integer and take a list that numbers are weirdly formatted in a string format because numbers shouldn't be like that. Numbers shouldn't have that quotation. Numbers should be like this, like that number three. But for some reason, they're in a string format. If I run this, it takes this function, which is the integer function and changes every member of this interval. Changes this, changes this, and changes this. But if I don't convert it to a list, you will not see the outcome. So I did convert it to a list, and now you can see that we have gone from string one to actually number one, string number two to actually number two, and such and such. So let me just quickly get rid of that example, go back to this, and see what we can do. I'm just gonna clear the output, and back to business. Now, I need to define a function and an iterable. Well, what is the iterable that I'm gonna be using here? I can see that in this formula, I want your eyes to compare this to this, right? The function will be called cube, and the iterable will be called Fibonacci of n, and the Fibonacci of n comes from here. I think I'm kinda unraveling this problem. So. This is gonna be my iterable, which comes from here. And this is gonna be my function, which comes from here. All right, I think I need my step number three in order to build my step two. My step number three is this cube function, right? Let's copy that because we know that we're gonna be talking about lambda function. And all I need to do, I will say whatever X you take, you need to cube it. This is literally what it does. It says, hey, for whatever that I give you, I'm calling it x, whatever I give you, you should return x to the power of three. So if I give this number two, it will return number eight. If I give it number 10, it will give me number 1000. So step three is very easily done. Now I can go up and I say, okay, your function is called q. That's easy. Now I need to construct the iterable. The iterable that I talked to you about is a list. So we know that our iterable is going to be a list. And what type of list it is? Well, we know that it will start with zero and one because that's what Fibonacci start with. They start with zero and one. 
And then as we go, we add the last two numbers to make the next number. And then again, the last two numbers to make the next number. Okay, so that's easy. What I wanna do, I wanna copy this and bring it down here because this is where I will be creating the iterable. And I will delete this comment here from HackerRank. All I need to do now is to start constructing my Fibonacci numbers. But you may ask, hey, how are you gonna do it? Well, it's very easy because I can create something as fib sequence, right? And I will start with zero and one. I know that fib sequences start from zero and one. That's easy. And then from there, whatever the user gives me, I will keep adding it. But you may ask, hey, how many times are you gonna repeat that? Well, I'm gonna repeat it n times. The user tells me how many they want. So if I run a for loop for any number, you can call it underscore or you can call it number, doesn't really matter, in range of n, so I will go as far as n goes, but I just need to remember that I don't wanna go from zero or one. I will start going from two because the first two numbers are already captured. I will start going from the third number. And then how does the third number really come to fruition? Well, I will need to take this first number and then add it to the next number, right? So what if I went ahead and I said, take fib sequence number zero, which is the index number zero, not literally that, but the index, and plus fib sequence number one, and put the summation after you add them put it in a container. What is that container called? Well, the container itself is called the fib sequence. All I need to do is to append to it. In short, I will take these two numbers, add them together, and put it as the next number in this fib sequence. But there is a problem with this. I will be always in this for loop taking this one and this one and adding them and appending it. I don't think that's the right way to do it. Because in a fib sequence, every time I need to take the previous two numbers. So first round, I will have to take this one and this one and add them together, put it here. Next round, I have to take this one and this one, add them together and put it here. Next round, I have to take these two numbers. And so you can see that I shouldn't have these indices. I need to have the very second last index and the last index. So I will start counting from the end. This is index negative one, this is index negative two. Or if this one was like this, this one would be index negative one and this one would be index negative two. So let me just make sure I clean up after myself. Now this for loop runs n times, which here is five times and keeps appending new data to the fib sequence, which is my container. I keep putting back into it. After I do that, this iterable, which is currently in the shape of a function, but the return will be a list. What is the list called? Well, it's called fib sequence. So let's run this. Let me drop this one more line for visibility. So I've got my cube, which is the function. I've got my iterable, which is also the function that returns an iterable, which is good. If you want this to work, you have to run this step first because the cube function has to be defined. I need to comment this one out because this is not a properly mapped function. And now if I run this, you will see that I received 0, 1, 1, 8, and 27. If I went ahead and asked for a bigger, uh, bigger n, for example, number eight, I can just get rid of this. I can run step two, run step three, and step four, you can see that I've gone 0, 1, 1, 8, 27, 1, 25, 5, 12, and 2, 1, 9, 7. Now, if I wanna structure this the way HackerRank has asked me, I need to come here and have a look at how they want me to do it. So I will copy my cube function here. So copy that and put it here. That's the cube function. Now put the Fibonacci um, function together. So copy that and paste it here. That's my Fibonacci. And I think I am done. I'm just gonna run the code and see the first set of tests are properly loading. Yes, I can see that it says congratulations. The first two test cases were correct. Let's submit the code and keep our fingers crossed. 
hopefully they're correct. If not, we'll have to fix it. It tells me that two of the 10 test cases failed. I suspect I know what the problem is. What I will do here, I will ask it to return only from zero to N and submit the code again. This one did successfully run and I've got a congratulations. But now you may ask, hey, what did you really change with putting that colon N? Let me tell you why this was the case. I will copy all of this code and bring it down here so that it's easier for me to, to run. If I run this and if I say, hey, I want you to run for five numbers, what you will see is 011827, right? If I run this for eight, again, no problems, you will see it as it is. But if I run this and I ask for one element only, I will get number zero, which is fine. And if I run this and I ask for nothing, I will get an empty. But if I were to get rid of this, which is the wrong answer, if I run this and I ask for zero, you will see that I am still getting zero and one, which is incorrect. That's why the first time it failed and I went ahead and I said, okay, I don't want this. I want it to be like this. And this is the correct form. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, share this with your friends and leave in the comments if you want to see other videos of and leave in the comments area whatever you want to see from my channel. Thank you.